All right, in this video segment, I'm gonna to talk to you about spills. Um, and of course, by spills, I'm referring to uh, taking a master uh, fader, something like a VCA master or an audio subgroup, or even in the case of, of S6L now, an auxiliary, and spilling out its membership on a set of faders so that we can actually work on the blend within that group or work on processing those channels within the group, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna run you through all of that today. And if you stick around to the very end of the video, uh, I'm actually going to reload a, an actual touring show file to give you some really practical examples of how this can enhance your navigation capabilities on the console. So uh, stick around for that. It's going to be pretty cool. All right, let's get to it here. So um, I've got the console kind of set up in a venue mode here. Uh, as you can kind of see, I've got a set of outputs here uh, surrounded by inputs. Uh, all of our banking options are dark there, letting us know we're in venue mode. And I've got a set of auxiliary masters here. Now, I'm, I'll tell you up front, I've gone ahead and assigned membership to all of these spills that I'm going to show you. I'm not going to go through the process of how do we assign to it. This is strictly going to be about spills. Check out the video on assignment, and you'll, uh, I'll show you how to do all the multi-assign workflows, etc. All right? So these are pre-populated uh, groups that we've, we're going to deal with here. All right, so um, we initiate a spill just exactly like we've done it in the past. Uh, with the exception of now we're using the attention button instead of the select button, okay? As you know, on S6L, we have an attention uh, button as well as a local selection button. And again, you're going to see how powerful having these two concepts separated here can be, uh, even when it comes to spilling, okay? So if you go to the output section here, you'll see that I've got auxes pulled up here. Uh, I've got an attention, uh, an aux attentioned here, and we're going to spill it. Uh, but probably before we spill the aux, let's, let's talk just very briefly about what dictates membership in an auxiliary, right? Because obviously we have the ability to turn up any channel at any time in an auxiliary bus and send it out. So what is going to dictate its membership? And we're going to do it with the on-off status of a given channel. If a, if a channel is on in the auxiliary, it's going to be considered to be a member of that auxiliary, okay? So likewise, when we spill it, which we do by double tapping the attention key, Notice that it spills out the channels that are turned on in that auxiliary now. It just basically filters them all out, okay? So it's a very quick way to get to the channels that are on in your auxiliary and do something with them. Now, here's the piece to keep in mind here. We've spilled out the auxiliary, but really what we've spilled out are the main faders not the actual aux levels here, right? If we want to get to the aux level on these faders, we need to locally select it, then go to the mix bus and adjust the level on it accordingly, all right? So just keep that in mind if you're going to do a strict spill of an auxiliary. Now, there's a great workaround to this uh, that really just enhances this whole idea, and uh, it has to do with our sends on faders workflow in S6L, meaning when we solo an auxiliary now, it automatically flips that auxiliary to the faders. Okay, so let's just do that one time. So I'm gonna solo that auxiliary. Oops, let me clear out of all of this first. Uh, I'm gonna solo that auxiliary first and notice what happens. Here are all the send levels for bank, for the very first bank in that actual aux. This is the actual send levels, right? But if I wanna to get to all the on channels, I've gotta search them out, right? Here are the on channels on this bank, I would have to go down to the next bank, find the on channels, etc. So if we use a combination of solo and spill, check out what happens, right? I've got it soloed and now I'm going to spill it. And now these are the send levels of the on channels in that aux, all right? So solo it first, then spill it and you're working directly on uh, levels that are on in that auxiliary, okay? Really super powerful, super efficient, right? Okay, let's clear out of all this. By the way, in terms of getting out of your spill, it's just the cancel button or a single press of the attention key. I'll try to do that uh, as we go forward here. All right, let's move on to um, let's move on to subgroups. Let's do a subgroup next. Uh, so I'm going to navigate down to a, my set of subgroups here. Yeah, right here. All right, so obviously we have the ability to spill subgroups as well. If we've got inputs assigned to subgroups, maybe they're subgroup uh, musical instrument families, etc., we can spill those out and get to them quickly as well. So again, we do that by double tapping the attention key, and we've done it now. Now these are all the inputs that have been assigned to that subgroup, 
Okay. Now, the thing I want you to take note of here is that we've actually filled all the input slots with spilled channels. And in fact, there are actually more channels in this spill than we have faders to show. So the question becomes, well, how do I get to those extra faders if I've only got 24 faders here dedicated to the spill? If you take a look at the TFT here in the MLM, you'll notice that we now have some banking options. And these banking options, notice they follow the group color, are actually the additional channels. So if I go to the second group of this, those are the four channels that were hanging out on the end here that I couldn't get to. All right, so we can get to those very quickly. Of course, we can also use nudge there if we wanna do it. If I wanna nudge single channel increments and get those four channels up where I can get to them, okay, no problem. Or I can go in groups of eight, of course, or I can go all, right? And just pull those next four up right down here on the left, all right? So it's easy to get to it even if you've got a very, very large spill happening. The TFT banking changes over to it, accommodate the bank spill, okay? Or the spill bank. All right, let's get out of this. All right, it's uh, worth noting also that we can also do all of this spill functionality from the universe view, right? If you'll notice, if I go to um, pages like auxes or groups or even VCAs, I have a spill button there, right? And it works a little bit backwards in terms of how, how you actually operate it. Here you choose spill first, and then you're gonna spill the, you're gonna choose the VCA or the group or the aux to spill. But it can all be accomplished here. And it actually, there's great leverage in doing it in the universe view because, for example, if you look at the universe view now, you can see that I, I can actually see in my situation, in this show file situation, 63 auxes all in one go, whereas opposed to being in venue mode, and if I, did, if I did it all from the control surface, I have to navigate and find it here. Here I can see it all in one view. I wanna spill. Uh, aux 63, boom, spilled, you know, back out of it. And I want to spill aux 19, boom, you know, just very, very quickly. Okay. So that in mind, let's spill our next, uh, our next master and let's go to VCAs to do that. Okay. So I'm going to navigate us to our VCA. Same principle applies here. A double tap of the attention key will get you a spill of the assigned members to that VCA. So I'm going to double tap. And of course, here are the inputs that I've got assigned to that VCA. Now, likewise, um, we have the ability with VCAs, of course, to be able to control other things other than input faders, right? We can have a VCA that's in charge of auxiliary masters or subgroup masters or even the left right master, etc. Right? So spill actually plays a very important role in that concept as well. So I'm going to cancel out of this spill and I'm going to go to my next VCA, which I've kind of pre-populated with a number of processing channels. So I'm going to spill that. And you'll notice down here on the left in the zoom view, I actually have an input, I have an aux master, a subgroup, and a matrix here. Okay, so I can get to any one of those things that are within the confines of that VCA. And once they've been spilled, well, guess what? I can actually spill them again. So now, once I've spilled these processing channels out from underneath the VCA, I can then spill the aux, or I can spill the subgroup, right? And here they all are here. Right, so it, it's just one more navigational possibility for you to get you there very, very quickly. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at this show file that I've loaded here. This is uh, an actual show file that I used on a recent tour that I just did. Uh, so I'm going to use this obviously to give you some uh, practical examples of how to use uh, Spill to navigate during your show. This is really, really effective. All right, so uh, matter of fact, I'm gonna start some audio here just so you can kind of get some excitement going on the console. And let me just take you around the, the console a bit. Right here in the center, I have a set of VCAs. I have eight VCAs assigned here. These are my main VCAs. I could probably mix 99% of the show from right here. In addition, I have the vocal and the vocal effects here as well. And notice that all of them are bank safed, meaning no matter what I do on the console, they're going to stay there. All right. Uh, to the outside of my bank safes over here, I have some additional channels, some additional input channels. To the left of the VCA, I actually have some subgroups, as you can see here. Uh, these are for instrument families, right? Drums, keys, guitars, acoustics, etc. cetera. Uh, in one position here, I actually have an auxiliary master. This is actually my auxiliary master that um, delivers audio to my parallel compression scheme. 
And to the left of that is just additional key inputs that I want to get to during the mix. And we're going to do this all off of the user-defined layer, right? This I'm going to use a user-defined layout. Bits and pieces of this could change song to song, but this is kind of the core layout that I would need to get to. And what I want to demonstrate to you here is that you can get to just about any input in your show just using Spill. Matter of fact, for my shows, I hardly ever get out of user-defined layouts. I, I can't even think of a time that I get out of it because I just use Spill to navigate down through the different areas or the different families that I'm operating, okay? So let's uh, let's just kick it off here. So I'm gonna, the first place I'll take you probably is this one right here. This is a guitar solo VCA. that I use this for writing guitar solos. So if I were to spill that, I'm just gonna double tap that, right? It's gonna spill out the two channels that are associated with that guitar solo. I can then re-blend the faders, I can select one of them, uh, work on equalization, whatever I need to do on that. But the most important piece of that to, to see is that I've kept a hold of my show here, right? I still have my VCAs in play, I can still continue to mix. Uh, I have my lead vocal, its effects, I can continue to balance that as needed while I'm doing this function, all right? So I'm gonna cancel back out of that now, and of course, everything comes back right where it was, okay? Uh, the next example I'll give you probably uh, keyboards. The keyboard subgroup is probably the better example here. So here in keyboards, if I'm gonna spill that subgroup, obviously I double tap again, and now I've spilled out all the keyboards in that subgroup. And it may not be overly apparent here, but I know it because I know the, the scheme. There's actually keyboard channels underneath my bank safes right now, which I might need to get to. And of course, I can use the TFT to navigate to them, or I can just nudge uh, a couple of channels down, and I can get to the additional channels that were underneath those spills, uh, or those safes, if I need to get to it. And of course, just get back to it. Cancel out of that. All right, so again, we're just navigating here. I haven't left user-defined layouts, yet I'm getting to all of my inputs to make changes as I need them. Uh, the next one we'll do is the, the auxiliary. Uh, remember, we have two ways of kind of addressing the auxiliary here. If we do it as a strict spill, then these are the faders that are feeding up into that aux where we're gonna adjust a level. These are the main faders that feed up into it. Uh, likewise, if I solo that aux first and then spill it, these are the actual send levels within the aux now, right? So again, I can get to this stuff very, very quickly. Like my kick, snare, toms are in this. If I wanna select them and get to it, do changes, I can get to it really quickly and not lost sight of any of the things that I'm working on while mixing the event, all right? The last one I want to show you is actually very slick. This, this is one I've really, really fallen in love with uh, on S6L. So you'll notice up here in the MLM, uh, in this fader position right here, the left-hand fader position, I've actually got a VCA here locked into the flex position. And this is a VCA that is actually in charge of my PA system. This, is my, this VCA represents master volume for the entire PA system. Now, the way I do this is take that VCA and put it in charge of a series of matrices. So I'll take you back to the big screen here just for a second, uh, just to show you this. Uh, so notice I have a set of matrices down here. Uh, I'll just highlight one here. One's left, right PA. Uh, we have sub drive, uh, one of the fills, an another fill, another set of fill, etc. And those are all tied back to this main VCA fader, right? So if I turn down this fader, you can see that it's affecting all of those uh, equally. All right, so that's, that's where the fun starts. But the fun continues when we spill that VCA. All right, so check out what happens. Now, keep in mind, we're going to have to spill this VCA from the universe view. We can't use a double tap of the attention here because that's actually what locks or unlocks the fader from the flex position, all right? So I'm just gonna simply uh, go to VCAs and I'm gonna initiate spill and then touch on the VCA that I have labeled PA matrices. And notice that it spills those five matrices out here on the control surface now. Now is when the fun really begins, okay? So obviously I can adjust them, the independent blends between those matrices if I were to need to do it. Okay, I'm gonna turn down my infill a little bit, whatever I need to do. But if I local, locally select one of those matrices, check out what happens. Now I have access to it up here on uh, the knob module, right? Uh, if I have input selected, I have access to the polarity, the delay, the direct output, even the safe uh, settings for that uh, given matrix. If I go to EQ, notice what happens here. I have the seven band parametric in either analog or parametric form. Uh, if I scroll one uh, element on the EQ, I actually get access to the third octave on that matrix as well. 
Now check out what happens here. If I change over my universe view to channel now, notice the matrix is there, matrix is there, and I have a visual confirmation of the parametric and the third octave there. I can go back and adjust both of those things as needed right from the knob module. Uh, if I carry on, I've got access to dynamics, plugins, if I've got plugins on the matrix, etc. And if I go to mix bus, now I have access to all the sources in that matrix for level as well as on off status, uh, panning, all kinds of things there. Okay. So I have access to all of that for any of the matrices in my PA system. And of course, the best part of all of that is I still have complete control of my show as a function of the safes, right? I still have my VCAs, my vocals, I'm mixing, even though I've navigated to a very, very deep part of the console to get to these, to these matrices, I still have not lost any aspect of control on my show, right? So again, we just cancel back out of that and we're right back to where we were on the console, all right? Super money workflow, great stuff. All right, so that's going to cover it for spills. I hope you enjoyed this kind of practical example. I always try to put some sort of practicality on these videos to, to make sure you can actually use these during the show. So um, keep checking back with us. Going to keep making these videos for you. So be sure and tune in for another Avid S6L operational video. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.